I don't know if you guys could actually hear the plane in the background, but my goodness, it is just so difficult to schedule videos and living near the airport. Eh, anyway, hey, what's up? It's Kit time for another video. Today we're talking about jigging rods. You might be uh, familiar with that brand right there. Not for sale in the States though, which is too bad. Overhead. And then we have this one, which is long, a long rod. And this is specifically for one, another type of jigging called long fall. And then we have slow jigging rods right here. These are Japanese rods. This is an Asian style rod. And this is a Japanese rod. Well, we're going to talk about these separately later. Okay. And we'll talk about fast jigging first. As for the rods themselves, they're, they're very different from your traditional rods. If this is your first time to go into jigging, you'll find that the rods feel really strange. Now, what's common between the whole set right here is that they're parabolic. Parabolic means like, this is your rod. It means that it bends pretty much the whole blank bends like that. Okay, fast rods or uh, non parabolic rods would only have a section like the tip bend or mid, not the whole rod. So slow rods. Okay, so these are all kind of slow action rods. What sets each apart is the action it imparts while you're jigging. And this is something that a lot of people have to actually kind of realize. There we go. This is this is a easier way to do, it, do this. When the fish is on, all rods will bend like that. Okay, this is your handle right here. All rods would be very flexible, all right? They're very, very soft. When you're working the jig and when you're actively jigging, with the slow jigging rods, the action, so it loads and the action is when it flicks up. When it flicks up, it makes the jig jump and then go horizontal and that's where your action is. Like I always say, slow jigging and fast jigging, they're kind of the same, right? They're kind of the same, only going different directions. And I, I've, spoke about, I, I've spoken about this, I mentioned this on the video that talks about the jigs. And the rods reflect that, okay? So the rod action is actually the reverse. So for fast jigging, the action is when the rod tip is down. This is when your jig gets its action, okay? So again, opposites, pol polar opposites of each other. Now, which one's better? <laughs> Actually, they're one and the same system, okay? It's part of a system. It's part of a system. Fast jigs are usually something that you use when the fish are active. And slow jigging was, was uh, partly invented because of the fact that when the bite slows down, slow jigging will still get, get you bites. And this is, this is what a lot of people miss out on because they think that slow jigging is a replacement for fast jigging. It's not. Okay, so you have fast. This is long fall and slow. Now, this is what a lot of people don't realize. Long fall is actually kind of an intermediary between fast and slow jigging. The reason being is that long fall is actually the oldest form of jigging. And in long fall, you can use pretty much slow jigs and fast jigs. On fast jigging rods, you cannot use slow jigs with great effectivity. It doesn't mean that it won't catch. It will, but it's not as effective. On slow jigging rods, you can't use fast jigs with great effectivity, but you can use both on long fall. Okay, so this is kind of like an in-betweener. Now, the reason being is that all jigs will always have an action either on the way up or on the way down. Long fall is basically exactly what it says. Lift your rod up as high as possible and you let it drop. So if you're using a fast jig on a long fall setup, you will have action on the way up. If you use a slow jig on a long fall rod, the action is when it flutters down. This will give you an action on your jig exclusively when it goes up. And this rod gives the jig the action exclusively almost on its way down this does both okay long fall rods are longer so this particular one is almost eight feet okay so short a bit long long okay you need the length to be able to take up as much slack as possible and your drop is where you're fishing it doesn't mean to say that you are not going to get bit on the way up or when you're jigging it up. Okay, so again, it kind of depends on like if you're using a fast jig on this, 
you're most likely going to get bit on the way up. Whereas if you're using a slow jig on it, more than likely it's always going to be on the part where you give it slack and let the jig drop. So three in the jigging system. A lot of people don't actually realize this, but they're a set. Okay, they're a set. That's it. It's a set. You can't say that fast jigging is better than slow jigging or, you know. And, and by the way, long fall is more of a technique in both. Because you could do long fall on this. You could do long fall on, on slow as well. So it really, it's just that for long fall rods, it's longer because they maximize your long fall. Okay? There's no better system. I always say that it's really not your choice to go with, with whatever system. It's what the fish responds to. So no one system actually works better. There are times when I have friends um, that catch more on slow jigging. At the same time, I'm also catching on fast. And there's been several instances where fast was better. And then there's also several instances where there's slow jigs were better. Uh, long fall, you can integrate. So it could happen anytime. It's just what you're holding and what the fish responds to. So there's no... If you're looking at everything, look at them as a uh, whole system, all three of them, and you know the end result is you catching fish. So the main differences again, the length, the action, and um, the specific use. But there's nothing really. It doesn't. It doesn't mean to say that fast is better than slow or slow is better than fast. It's. It's. That's not the the right way of of um, thinking. I believe for me, it's what the fish respond to. All right. So now. Let's talk about something in this slow jigging here that, that I think needs to be mentioned. Now, the reason why I actually have two rods here is because one is Asian style, one is Japanese style. Okay. The main difference between both of, both of them is that one, you fight with your rod pointing towards the fish, and that's the Japanese way. And then the other is with the load on the rod. It doesn't mean to say that you can't pull back on a Japanese rod. Okay, that's far from the truth. You can, but you can't go past a certain angle, which is about 38, 40 degrees. Over that, the force would be not on the blank, it would be at the tip, and that's pretty much how you break rods. For Asian style rods, you can actually fight the fish like you normally would with a normal rod and reel. So you can you can fight the fish with the rod bent. If you go to a tackle shop and they tell you that the, the only difference is that Asian style rods or this rod is a power rod, you fight fish with it, that's, that's uh, actually kind of wrong because it's kind of like a sliding scale. The main purpose of the rod when it comes to real slow jigging is to impart action on the jig and make it as enticing to the fish as possible. When the fish bites, the use of the rod, it drops close to zero. So you're fighting the fish with your reel. Like I said, it's a sliding scale. If you're fighting the fish with the rod, part of the action of the rod that's supposed to be, give you the most enticing action for your jig is taken away. So there's, there's like a, a percentage of the the rod that's attributed to fighting the fish. Now, so just, just remember that piece of information, okay? If the rod is optimized for fighting fish, it's going to do less in the move your jig enticingly department. That's, that's pretty much something that you need to keep in mind and also something that you actually have to keep in mind when you buy. Is there an in-betweener? Yeah, there are some rods. There are some rods that, that do both uh, relatively okay. But again, these rods... Uh, you have to test them out yourself, actually, and see if it works for you or not. Okay, now, also, a very big difference is that for Japanese rods, and this is like one of those parts where you could actually really feel the difference. For Japanese rods, when you reel, even if you keep your hand steady and when you reel, the, the rod actually does the work for you. It does the load and then it unloads and that flick gives the action to your jig. Asian rods, you have to move your hand up. You have to move, okay? You have to move it so that it does the compression and the decompression. You kind of help it, okay? You, you have to help the rod actually get the right action. And that's something that for you to consider because if you're actually fishing for the whole day, that, that extra motion contributes to fatigue. Or pretty much the whole system calls for something very, very light. 
and the only thing that you would feel is your jig and this is very important because some fish would actually just swim up to the jig inhale it and then go up and you won't feel it and that's already a strike sometimes it's as subtle as that so the lighter your gear is the more you would be able to last longer that's one and two the more you would also be able to feel the fish all right so the more sensitive your whole and this is the reason why it's light in the first place because it makes it more sensitive okay the, you see these guides are actually twisted okay so some rods have straight guides some actually have spiral my take on this is that it really depends on what you're comfortable with and for me i'm comfortable with either it doesn't matter to me the most important thing for me is the the action of the blank there's advantages and disadvantages to each uh, especially storage i would say it's a big thing for me put this on the rod sock it's easier to manage all right when when it comes to just the the storage straight guides are easier to manage than spiral guides as far as action is concerned a lot of people are saying that spiral guides help prevent your hand from twisting and it helps and it, it, it does okay there's there's no there's no uh, argument there but there are some guides or sorry there are some blanks that actually fix that like take for example shimano's uh, spiral x technology it helps with with the twisting of the hand also you notice that here on the desk i've already said that these are slow jigging rods and i showed you earlier that there was a uh, spinning rod for fast jigging if someone tries to sell you a uh, spinning slow jigging rod uh kind of uh kind of uh iffy right there there are some people that like using spinning for slow jigging if you're fishing shallow there's really no problem but when you're fishing deep now remember that these jigs are designed to flutter how the uh, jig drops on a slow jigging overhead is that you have to put thumb pressure on the spool and the jig will change its position from going like that to like that and that's when you drop all right so you have to put consistent thumb pressure until the jig goes down to the bottom and this is the whole reason why you know you're you shouldn't be using spinning rods or a spinning combo for slow jigging for me it just kind of doesn't exist for shallow water you know um up to about 40 grams or so that's perfectly fine shallow water but when you're fishing deep uh no you know go ahead and try it out for yourself but again these things kind of expensive so if you do that and you try it out and you prove that it's actually something that that's difficult um, or gives you that kind of challenge uh, guys it's a very expensive lesson we go to the fast jigging here all right so here these are all abu garcia by the way i love the jdm abu garcia i'm not sponsored or anything okay so first just for me they're, they're fantastic the actions are, are, are really spot on and they're cheap all right so um you can see that i have a spinning and a uh, an overhead there's a difference between spinning and overhead when you when you actually really look look at it now when you're using long jigs it's far more beneficial to actually use spinning on your fast jigging setup when you drop down and yeah, you can try this out actually you know go and and see if you can reel continuously 100 percent of the time when i say continuously it means that you're reeling up and down when the rod goes up you reel when the rod goes down you reel you can't do that you know why because for spinning there's that angle on your spool there's that angle that goes 90 degrees and that actually works against you okay now think about this when your spinning rod is actually at load you can't wind you have to pump you have to pump this is the advantage of the overhead over the spinning when you get into the nuts and bolts you can actually flat wind flat winding is reeling without pumping for spinning you just have to do it it's it's physics if you look at it at that and you say that spinning has a disadvantage actually you're, you're also kind of wrong there because you can take advantage of that pause here's a very good example this is a long slim jig and this is a, a good example of a short jig now with your conventional tackle and this has a very erratic action and what you remember that the action of this is actually when you're really going up okay so you're you're jigging and you don't have a pause on overheads and what happens is that when you're jigging this continuously zigzags so imagine a vertical walk the dog action and that's exactly what it gives you for short jigs 
they work better on conventionals. But for long jigs, they work better on spinning because you have that long pa that, that pause when you jig. Even if it's just a split second, it's actually enough to actually have your jig in the horizontal position. And some jigs such as these. Because at that pause, you could actually, some jigs actually slide. So when you're jigging, that pause makes this slide. And that slide usually triggers bites. So there are sliders that you could take advantage of and they work better on spinning gear than they do on overheads. You could also do them on overheads, but it's just less effort to actually use them on spinning rods. But that's pretty much it. Now, do you have to spend a lot? Okay, this type of fishing is expensive. It's not cheap. Um, if you go to the top end market for these uh, rods and reels, you'll find that they, you can easily spend upwards of $2,000 for just the rod. Even up to $2,000 for 2000 or more for customs is, is not unheard of. Okay, so it's quite common. No, you don't need to. Like I, like I have here as an example, this is a JDM Abu Garcia. They're not expensive at all. And although sometimes, if you, especially if you're in the US, it'll be hard to import because of the lengths and everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you, can, you can still import them. You know, there's some sellers online that, that uh, ship for free or charge a small amount of money for the packaging and all that, which is fine. Luckily for us, uh, jigging here is kind of developed and we can we can get our hands on some good rods, some mid-ed rods as well. However, we're in the same boat for, for everyone else if you want something really specific. So it's still kind of difficult for us. Now, um, which system is better? Again, I'd like to repeat, it's one and the same system. Each of these is just part of one big system. So... If you look at it in a very objective point of view, it's jigging. It's not that slow jigging will work better or fast jigging will work better. They would work equally better. All right. So if you're in the fence for this, uh, I guess you could you could look around in Japan and get some mid-end gear and they'll still work. Again, Abu Garcia and there are several other brands in Japan that carry good rods reels don't don't mess around with reels buy the reel that's supposed to be used for this because it will give really give you an advantage if you know what you're doing already then that's it that's uh you know that's something that you would be able to play around with but again that's a separate discussion but as far as rods go here's my best advice okay i just stick to you know rods that are actually well either Japanese or Asian but also be very careful of which one you choose because like I said it's kind of like a sliding scale thing specifically for slow jigging it's a very different system so you have to look at it as a system and not as say a specific category of rod because if you look at it as, as just a specific category of rod you'd probably end up saying that this rod sucks as opposed to actually saying that it's a different system and it's a different way of using it. And th this is some this is something that I believe either confuses people or it puts them off or makes them actually use things wrong. And I think this is the whole reason why a lot of people are complaining about broken rods and all this. Because at the end of the day, people are not going to blame themselves. They're going to blame the product, right? So anyway, that's it. Just my thoughts kind of a long video but i hope you've learned something if i missed something out um comment below and let's start a discussion if there's something that's unclear again comment um if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't yet please subscribe so that's it for now thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one class dismissed